Hey, good morning, everybody. How we doing? I'm over here. My name is Jay. You are listening to the Flavor in Your Ear podcast. I'm going to kick it to my man, Danny, to uh, formally introduce our, our guest this morning. Everybody, welcome to the show. Today we got special guest, Andrew Moran, NBA skills trainer, owner of Miami Hoop School, uh, head coach at Columbus High School. Uh, we got a lot of interesting things to talk about, uh, interesting stories, and uh, <coughs> How he has gotten to where he's at today, uh, building, you know, Miami Hoop School and uh, networking, and into the point where he's, you know, <clears throat> made the, the the connections that he has today. So, Drew, uh, kind of what we do is, can everybody hear me? Yeah, we got. It. So, <laughs> kind of what we do is we we like to get to the beginning of everybody's story, right? Everybody yeah. has a story. Everybody got somewhere. You didn't just get to where you're at today just by showing up and, and, and it magically appeared for you, right? You That was a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of persistence to, to get to build Miami Hoop School to where it's at, to the networking you've done with the NBA players and, and training uh, certain, you know, high-level talent. So we, that's where we want to start off today. Like, what, what inspired Miami Hoop School? How did it start? Um, who gave you the push to, to, really, to really get it off the ground and, and, and really begin it? Uh, well, I'll, I'll start a little bit. <clears throat> I moved to Miami when I was 15. Uh, um, <clears throat> I did two years of high school at Gables. That's where I played basketball. So, you know, that's kind of like my little introduction into Miami basketball. Um, I arrived just after, I arrived August of 98. This was just after Miami High had uh, kind of got in trouble with some of that stuff. Um, so just kind of learning the landscape of basketball here in Miami, um, at Gables, uh, was in obviously district of Miami high. Miami high was powerhouse at and that time. And, and, and sorry during, to interrupt. Go ahead. You arrived from Texas, correct? Yeah. From Houston. I moved from Houston when I was 15. Born and raised? So, uh, I mean, yeah, I was born there. I, I like to say that's where I'm from, but, um, Miami's definitely my home. For sure. I've been here. A lot of use a lot of people use the term by way. So be like, Oh, I'm from Miami by way of Houston. That's right. What do. So, uh, like, I, I've been over here over 20 years now. Okay. I got my wife. I got four kids. Roots this are firmly. Yeah, this is my home. I, I, I love it here. Um, the city has been really good to me. But like I said, I played uh, basketball at Coral Gables. I could have probably played at some small schools like Division Three and AIA. Uh, had some distractions at the time. Uh, was kind of an immature kid. Ended up going to, you know, college just to be a student. Uh, and I finished up. At Florida State, uh, my brother was a walk-on there, kind of was around the team a little bit. I also helped out with the uh, the women's side there. So all, all along, as, as I go forward, I, you know, basketball was always there. My dad introduced it to us. He played in college. So me and my brothers and my sisters actually all played as well. Um, but I would say, you know, I came back from when I graduated Tallahassee. I got married. Uh, I was working over in Key Biscayne, Parks and Rec helping out just with the sports and then, you know, trying to build the basketball up there as well. But, and I would do like little private workouts here and there, uh, but really was just not much just doing it because it's fun, you know, you're, uh, and then I, I, uh, so I went to high school with David Carreno, uh, was my best friend here in Miami. His brother is the coach, uh, was the coach at Miami high at the time. Uh, Marcus Carreno, uh, he gave me a job, um, uh, as an assistant there. I uh, was really, I learned a lot, learned a ton, and he allowed me to kind of uh, handle the uh, player development, you know, not that, at that time, it, you know, there weren't really, I wouldn't say, even in the NBA or college, there were no, like, player development assistants, you know. Yeah, things was, have gotten more sophisticated, it seems. Definitely, in, in, in and it's world. it's grown a lot. Th that industry is very young, I would say, you know, 10 to 12 years, you know, in terms of people making a career out of it. Um, but anyways, I, I was there. He allowed me to do it. I kind of fell in love with the player development. My wife ended up getting pregnant. As you know, uh, high school coaches don't <laughs> get compensated very well. I decided uh, in the beginning, I just wanted to be there a lot as, as my daughter was born. And then, you know, through Miami High, some other Miami High people reached out to me and said, there's a team that is looking for some shooting uh, some just to help them out with shooting. It's a small little AAU team uh, with some people there. And I, I went over and I started work with them on a team basis. And then 
slowly got into some more private sessions. And to be honest, that's, I would say that's where, that's where it really started in terms of, okay, this can actually be a business. Um, and again, I didn't understand everything at the time. I was just kind of going along with it, making some extra cash, uh, was fun for me and my wife. We could do more stuff, just kind of her and I and have a good time. So, but at that, that I started to do that and then it just started growing more and more and I was able to do it in, uh, in, uh, this guy's backyard and he just let me continue to do it. Um, I would leave uh, at that time I, I started teaching, so I would leave teaching and I would go there and arrive around three thirty four. And as it grew, I wouldn't leave till eight, eight thirty at night. So just doing private small groups. Um, so I would say, you know, <clears throat> that's where my love for the player development came from coaching with Marcus at, uh, at Miami high. And then, and then just, uh, you know, just through, I, I, I'll tell you what, and then, and we'll get deeper into it, but my success comes a lot just from the relationships that I built. Um, and you think like you, you, you meet someone and you build a relationship and you think something's going to happen like soon and you don't realize it, but seven years down the road, this relationship has grown and then there's this opportunity that comes up. So my success is definitely the relationships that I've built throughout Miami, not just in the basketball world, but just with also people that have helped me along the way with business. So I would say that's where it started. It started in the backyard of uh, my friend Jose's house. Um, and I just, I went to work and I, and uh, I just knew that I knew, I knew I was pretty good, but I needed to be better. So I actually jumped on with this other group uh, called Impossible Training that I did for a while. Uh, this guy, Michael Lancaster was doing really well in the industry. And he, he uh, was one of those first guys that made a career out of it. Um, because at the time I'm teaching, so my really my main source of income is coming from Education. me as a teacher, yeah, teaching and, and and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I learned a lot from them. I eventually kind of moved away from them just just because I felt like I grew out of it and yeah. and went. And that's when I created Miami Hoop School. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff in between there. I don't right. know if you have any questions or or anything, but my love for it definitely came from when I was coaching in Miami High and the start of it and like the the thing like oh i'm gonna make this a business was in that backyard where so i was doing it you know uh what i what i think and I, this is something we talked about with uh coach shaw in the last episode was um the time things take right so what and then the work that goes into it and the things that people don't people only see the success like if they go on your instagram right now they see the abundance of nba players that Correct. you work with and the, the academy and all the kids that go to the academy but they don't see what it took to get to that point, right? And 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 uh, the time. How long did you have the academies up before they were like? How many years were they running before they became to where they are now? Uh, well, let's say I started when I was what twenty eight, twenty seven, twenty eight. I think I'm thirty nine now. Um. I mean, I will say this: I'm five, six years in. I'm not training NBA guys. That didn't come until, I would say, the last five years. All right. All where right. that really was, like, something that I do. Right. You so know? everything has, like, a very organic uh, evolution, right? So you start off wherever you start off. And, again, you know, you, you develop relationships. And then you get into, you know, growing yourself and, and, and your actual skill set, right, to be able to prepare people. Um, a, a transition like that from, you know, very localized, regional talent and, and and individuals how do how does that segue happen and 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 do you find yourself having to uh really up it or 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 change your approach whenever you're starting to deal with people that are are either getting paid for their profession or or even just doing it at an incredibly high level with college things like that um i mean yeah i think you you definitely better come in there prepared you know i always felt like i was prepared for workout because i prepared before I kind of, you know, especially if I had a bunch of time, I can prepare for the NBA guys, which gathering film and, and looking. I mean, one of the greatest things that we have for any person for resources is YouTube, you know? Yeah. So if you don't have access to these things that, like, you know, colleges and NBA teams have access to uh, a program where they can just look up all types of film. But if you don't have that, I mean, you could look up 
it, maybe it's not extensive as those programs, but you can look up on YouTube and, and prepare yourself for anything. But I knew that, uh, I think also like, I'm always in the mindset of, of learning. Right. right? Okay. So, uh, I'm not the, I'm not the, the greatest trainer, you know, bask I didn't invent basketball. Right. Right. Know? Right. Um, uh, but I have, I've been blessed to be able to do these things. And the only way for me to continue to do it at a high level is to continue to want to learn at a high level. Okay. Um, you know, so I try to surround myself with, uh, you know, other trainers that are doing it at a high level and, and see what they're doing and see it, how they see how they do it, take from them and learn. And now I'm also coaching an actual team. And I think that's allowed me to be a, a better trainer as well. Because sometimes I think when you're a, tr you're just training, you know, uh, you know, the kids improving, but when the kid goes back to his team, he, he actually has a role, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, right. Uh, whether, whether it's the role you enjoy or not, uh, doesn't mean that that's the role that you stay with, but you have a role. And if you don't do it well, you might not, you might not get the playing time. Correct. You know? Correct. And then, yeah, you can't segue into either a more featured role, a prominent role, things like that, for sure. You have to fit in the team. Yeah. And, and, you know, I want to give like a little backstory to, for, for the people out there to understand, because I know everybody's going to go, you know, for the new people that are just discovering what Miami Hoop School is or who Andrew is, um, you know, you're going to, we're going to put the link to, uh, Miami Hoop School Academy on the on the on the channel and so you guys can click on it and go see his stuff. But a lot of you guys are gonna see that like you click on it, NBA players everywhere and stuff like that. And um but I I'll, I'll give like a quick little story. So everyone cause we always want people to understand that things take time, things don't grow overnight, success doesn't happen and and people have to make hard decisions a lot of the time. So for the people out there that are grinding away and doing something, so I remember one day Andrew called me while he was still teaching. This was when he was at at the Rail Academy. And uh, we were just talking and he was going through like, uh, like just decisions. Like he wanted to go full time with the Academy again. Like he wanted to his wife was pregnant. He wanted yeah, to like pregnant with yeah. the twins at the time. So my right. daughter was already born. They were twins on oh, the way. Oh boy. Yeah. So no pressure. So a, a part of him felt like he was ready to step away from, from teaching and, and having more of that free time to run the academies and do that. But a part of him also as a man and as a family man knows that if he leaves that situation, there's a, there's a sense of stability that yeah. gets right. So he has to like either commit to something and, and, and hope it works or, you know, and then lose that foundation that he has that gives him a steady check and he knows it's not going anywhere versus, you know, taking the risk on his own business and, and, and moving forward for that but while also being able to provide for his family. And I think that sometimes like we lose, like we'll see like Andrew stuff and we'll say, oh, look, look where he's gotten. And you know, even a decision like that is very difficult for anyone to make, you know, like you just said, pregnant with twins, uh, mortgage, house, wife. Uh, it, there's so many things that are going on in the background and he's trying to make a decision on something and he gambled on himself and it ended up working. But but just because uh, like it, it, that, that doesn't make it any easier just because it worked. Right. It I, was there was still a lot. to. Well, and it. I'll say this. Right. What if it uh, I think it would have even been well worth it, even if it didn't work. Yeah, for um, sure. I think we always, we think, we always hear stories of it working because we always hear the success stories, right? But if, let's say, I don't know, something happened and it didn't work I, for whatever reason, right? Because uh, I want people to really give it a shot of what they like to do. Right. Um, and, you know, obviously my situation was different. It's a little bit different. I have kids. I need to be also, like you said, a man and, and, yeah. and be able to provide. But... I, I I would say when I did that, um, the academy went to places that I didn't yeah. I didn't know because you, you know, know I, that one foot in one foot out. So correct. once you finally jump in, you're all in. You've got all your momentum. And I was actually like, it's a good point that you're bringing up because I think a lot of us, including this project that right. we're doing right now, yeah. right, we're like, okay, Danny just gave up something that that he was really passionate about, and he, you know, once he said that, then I'm like, okay, I'm in. Because I know that if he's in like that, a hundred percent, two feet in, then it, this is this could only grow somewhere. You've, you're invested, right? right? So, but again, he doesn't have the pressure that you did. I don't have that, you know. Like so, so I mean, yeah. But still, I mean, of course, you don't have the pressure of kids, but you still gotta, you, you know, everyone still has to live their life and has their own bills that they gotta pay. Correct. Uh, right. You know, um, obviously, it does change when you you have to take care of a human life, you know. But right. 
when you're but more worried about someone else and certain qualities but i'll say this when i was teaching you know in those last <laughs> in the last year or two like it was time for me to get out of there yeah yeah uh, you know I, I was like the phone's ringing and i and i step out of the class and one kid one kid did a log of how many times <laughs> i went out of the class and the principal screamed this. at me um but it, it was what? just it was time already you know yeah. like I'd already <laughs> the mind was elsewhere. Yeah, yeah it was. It was, it was the focus was already there. So the fact that I did it, uh, and it was it, it, you know, you never know if it was the right time. But it, looking back, it was the right time. You know, hindsight of twenty twenty. But still, you know, um, sometimes you just got to take a risk. I mean, in any business, if you're doing, if you're doing your own business, you're you're, you're taking a risk yeah, because nothing's exactly. guaranteed. And uh, if there's no risk, there's really not a lot of upside. Yeah. Correct. So.